This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy romance film called The Late Bloomer, which is an adaptation of American journalist Ken Baker's autobiography titled Man Made, A Memoir of My Body. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. During one of his sessions, lovemaking therapist Peter Newman's knowingly tells his patient that she's addicted to sleeping with people. He advises her to read his book, which according to him, will help her rechannel her negative sensual impulses. After that, he spends most of his free time making notes for his new book, which will talk about the importance of lovemaking to a man and whether a person can truly be happy without sleeping with anyone. When he gets home, Peter sees his neighbor Josh, who thanks him for advising him to take a girl to the movies. Peter then finds his friend Luke and Rich waiting for him inside his apartment as the both of them are there to take a break from their own problems. Peter tells them that he promised his crush Michelle that he'll go over to her house for a gathering and his friends tease him a little before he leaves. At Michelle's place, one of her friends, Nikki, playfully scolds Peter for not bringing a plus one. Peter apologizes to her, then waits for Michelle's workaholic boyfriend, Charlie, to finish talking on the phone. Once he's done, he introduces himself to him. Then Peter heads to the kitchen to greet Michelle, and she's eager to let him taste her new recipe. Peter encourages her to put up her own restaurant, but Michelle doesn't think she's ready. Peter and Michelle continue their conversation in the kitchen, and Peter's headache doesn't stop him from teasing Michelle. However, when Charlie arrives, Peter starts looking completely uncomfortable and out of place. After getting home that night, Peter makes another note in his recorder about whether two people can have a romantic relationship without sleeping with each other. The next day, Peter visits his doting mother Brenda and his father James, who's worried that his son is nothing like him. Brenda wants James to be happy for their successful son, but James can't help but wonder why Peter doesn't act like most guys his age. He even says that he doesn't know what Peter is. Later on, Peter meets with his boss, Carolyn, and she informs him that a woman from MPR named Noima Wilcoxon wants to interview him about his book and their clinic. That night, Peter sees Charlie arguing with Michelle and learns that the woman has broken up with him. Peter tries to comfort Michelle, and she cries as she tells Peter that love isn't supposed to feel like that. Confused, Peter asks her what she feels like when she's with Charlie, and Michelle says she feels alone. Trying to avoid the topic, she asks him to drink some wine with her, as they sit on the couch, Peter tells Michelle that he thinks she deserves better and for the first time, she agrees with him. She then tells him that she's now ready to become a chef and that she'll transfer all her energy into something she really wants. As Michelle and Peter hug each other, Michelle thanks him for always being there for her. Suddenly, Michelle gets the urge to kiss Peter, so she does. Unfortunately, Peter feels a sharp pain in his head and tells Michelle he'll just call her the next day. At home, Peter contemplates whether there's something wrong with him. Rich and Luke wake Peter up to tell him about their basketball game in the morning, but Peter says he can't play because of his headache. In the middle of their conversation, Michelle suddenly shows up outside, making the three men wonder why she's there. Peter talks to Michelle while his friends watch them through the peephole. Michelle thanks him for his company the previous night before apologizing for kissing him. Then Peter and Michelle hug and Peter's awkward gesture convinces Luke that he's really gay. Luke and Rich later tell Peter to finally make his move on Michelle since she's already single, but Peter believes that the lady just needs some kindness from him. Meanwhile, Nikki and Michelle talk about Peter, and Michelle tells her friend about their kiss and how she feels safe around him, but like many others, Nikki also believes that Peter bats for the other team too. During their basketball game, a ball hits Peter's groin, knocking the poor man out. He is then taken to a hospital, where a doctor orders a CAT scan and an MRI for him. After that, the doctor performs a physical examination, and he learns that Peter's private parts are not fully developed. Later on, the doctor informs Peter that they found a benign tumor in his brain that is pressed up against his pituitary gland. The pressure it applied has caused Peter's body to produce a female hormone called prolactin, which stopped his normal male development. In other words, Peter has never gone through puberty. And Peter is ecstatic to know that he's not a freak. Peter shares his condition with his friends, and eventually, he undergoes surgery to remove the tumor through his nose. After some time, Peter is visited by his parents and friends, 
happy that he'll finally be able to experience the full essence of his masculinity. The doctor also informs Peter that his operation was successful before reminding him to focus on his recovery. Peter spends the next couple of days at his parents' house, where his mother gladly takes care of him. Now that everything seems to be in place, he starts having the sudden urge to read adult magazines, which is a completely new feeling to him. After a few days, Luke and Rich visit Peter to see how he's doing. Peter tells them that he's worried the surgery didn't work since he feels the same way as before, but his friends say he just needs to give his body more time to develop. The three men then talk about Peter's manhood, with Rich and Luke wondering if he's already pitched a tent. Despite his embarrassment, Peter admits that he's never experienced it before and still hasn't experienced it. Being good friends, Luke and Rich hire a professional dancer to cheer Peter up and see if his body will respond to her. The woman starts undressing and dancing for Peter when his two friends leave, but sadly, Peter doesn't feel anything. Peter talks to Michelle through text in the evening, but he doesn't tell her about his condition. The next day, Peter finally gets a hard-on, much to his parents' delight. Peter is embarrassed and happy at the same time, so he immediately returns to his place for some privacy. There, he kicks out Luke and his date for staying at his house without his permission, and once they're gone, Peter pleasures himself all day and all week long. When he meets his friends, Peter tells them that he can't stop pleasuring himself, but they assure him that that's just normal. One day, Michelle informs Peter that she got accepted into a new program that Bobby Flay is sponsoring. Michelle thanks Peter for giving her the courage to do what she loves, and when they hug, Peter suddenly pulls away in fear that she'll feel his manhood. Peter then goes to work, and for the first time, he finds himself hyper aware of everything that women do around him. He goes through the usual routine, but now it's difficult for him to concentrate on what they're trying to say. The next day, Peter gets an acne breakout and feels embarrassed to join Michelle and Nikki for breakfast. Confused with everything that's happening, Peter sees his doctor and tells him his problems. The doctor tells him to calm down as his puberty experience is just accelerated, but this only makes Peter even more anxious. That night, Michelle tells Peter that she's leaving for her retreat with Bobby Flay the next day. She also notices that Peter has been acting weird lately, but Peter assures her that he'll explain everything to her once she returns from her trip. During a video call with Michelle, Peter gets jealous that she's spending extra time with Bobby Flay, and he talks sarcastically to her before ending their call. When the time comes for his interview with Noema, Peter goes on air. While he's speaking, Peter's voice cracks, humiliating him. He tells his parents about this, but to his frustration, he feels that they don't understand him and what he's going through. That night, Peter gets pissed at Michelle once again after learning she's at Bobby Flay's house. On their way to their basketball game, Peter reluctantly agrees to babysit Rich's kids on his and his wife's anniversary. Later that day, Peter spends time with Josh and tells him that he plans to ask Michelle out, and the boy advises him to get into some serious R&D before she returns so he can show Michelle that he knows how to play with cats. Heeding Josh's advice, Peter uses Tinder to find different girls and go out on dates. He even sleeps with some of them. After some time, Peter finds Charlie waiting for Michelle outside her apartment and tells him he wants to make things right with her. He then asks Peter to tell Michelle that he dropped by, and Peter promises that he will, even though he really dislikes him. That night, Peter tries to work on his new book, but struggles to find the right words to write. When Michelle returns, she assumes that the flowers are from Peter, and he doesn't bother correcting her, even though they're from Charlie. She then invites him to her house, and Peter tells her that he'd love to talk about her retreat over dinner. Peter returns home to change his clothes, and there, he receives a call from Rich. Frantic, the man reminds him that he agreed to babysit his kids. This plunges the two into an argument, and Peter clarifies that he wants to do something for himself, just for once, and that he won't give up his chance at being with Michelle for him. Before their date, Josh tells Peter that women like some edge and advises him not to be nice to her. Though Peter tries telling him that nice is the only tune he knows, Josh is adamant that he cannot be nice, so Peter chants, be a douche, repeatedly to himself. Peter and Michelle then go to a restaurant, where he treats Michelle rudely. Michelle wonders if Peter is jealous of Bobby Flay, but Peter tells her he's not and that he's just nervous. In the middle of their conversation, Rich and his wife arrive and angrily point out that Peter has stolen their reservation. Peter and Rich almost get into a physical fight, so Michelle leaves before they can even start. 
Finally, Peter tries to explain to her what he's been going through, but Michelle doesn't want to hear him out. After saying that he's starting to sound like Charlie, Michelle tells him that she's got a text from Charlie saying that he dropped by and gave her some flowers. Cornered, Peter grows defeated and yells at Michelle to just go back to Charlie. At work, Peter can't focus on what he's doing at all because of his fight with Michelle. So when his patient keeps going on and on about the obscene details of her oral fixation, Peter tries to have her pleasure him with her mouth. Just then, his boss walks in on them, and no matter what he tells her, he still ends up being suspended. The roller coaster ride that Peter found himself in just keeps getting worse and worse, and now he's practically bereft. Broken up over it all, he talks to his father, and James reveals that he had one strayed from his marriage and that he learned a great deal from it. One of the things he learned is that they, as men, are defined by how they can repair their mistakes. Thoughtful, James muses that the biggest change they can go through is discovering the difference between acting like a man and being one. At this point, Peter is crying and he asks his father if he embarrasses him. James earnestly says that he doesn't and that he never did. And though he's known that something was off with Peter, James reminds him that he's still his son and that he loves him. Later on, Peter gives a talk on Ned Talks. He, he discusses to his audience about how their sensual energy can be altered and diverted. In the middle of his speech, Peter chuckles as he suddenly remembers the talk he had with his father. Now, he tells his audience that the theories he wrote in his book are all flawed. From here, Peter unabashedly discusses just how glorious and mind-blowing banging and jerking are. He even asks his audience to raise their hand if they polished a dolphin last night. Peter admits that the terrifying and even confusing beauty that comes with lovemaking was something that he missed, both in his book and in his personal life. So, to summarize his long-winded point, he encourages his audience to screw and screw and screw away until their hearts are covered in baby batter. In the end, everything that Peter told his audience contradicts his book. After some time, Peter makes up with Rich and his wife and he tells them that Michelle has gone back to Charlie. His friends feel sorry for him and say they're good for each other, and Rich's wife informs him that Michelle won Bobby Flay's contest. She also advises him to go to the restaurant to apologize to Michelle, but Peter thinks it's not the right time to do that. However, Peter changes his mind and tries to talk to Michelle, but she won't hear him out. Michelle tells him to leave, but Peter's friends won't let him unless he tells Michelle the truth. Finally, Peter publicly confesses his condition to Michelle, and Michelle is shocked that he's been through so much. Funnily enough, Michelle breaks up with Charlie, saying that they were never meant to be together. With Bobby Flay's push, Peter and Michelle reconcile before sharing a kiss. Sometime later, Peter marries Michelle and the couple is expecting a baby. Peter's new book comes out too, and as he signs them, Carolyn stays in the corner and tells a kid about how she played a big part in Peter's success. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.